Oh, 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 I need to get back in the cardio. Whew. <laughs> hey, door 100, let's go. <gasps> who, who are you? My name is Jeff. You're friendly? Oh, good. I, I have been lost in here for so long. It's so great to see a friendly face. Uh, tentacle, I suppose. Oh, come on. You, you, you just want money? Look, man, I, I gotta go. Oh, 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 I'm regretting all my past decisions. No, no, no. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, where today there's even more lore indoors. Gotta love those triple rhymes. Today, we're revisiting the world of Roblox Doors, the game that totally pulled a Scott Cawthon on us by releasing their new Hotel Plus update a few hours after our last theory on them went live. Gotta love getting trolled by indie devs and validating our theories mere minutes after upload. Though, in this case, I'll actually let it slide since the GT Live Couch is a painting that you find inside the game. It's awesome. It's also something we were made aware of many, many, many times over on the Game Theorist subreddit. Speaking of, if you too want to join in making me aware of very obvious Easter eggs, hop on over there and help me push this community to 800k. You guys are the best. Seriously, I'm, I'm giving you a hard time, but it's fun. I'm glad that you're all excited about it. I'm just as excited as you are. And while I joke and say invalidating our theories, that's actually not true in the slightest. You see, with this new update came even more hidden secrets and bits of Lord Chuan. Some of it was small stuff like piles of rotting flesh spread around door 100 where we encounter the figure, providing additional evidence that the creature is probably a homunculus made from flesh and bone like we talked about in our previous episode. But then there were some bigger additions. More monsters, more dialogue, and literally a thousand more rooms to explore as we try to make our way out of this haunted hotel. So unpack those bags, dudes. We're checking in for another night stay of Roblox door lore. Let's start with one of the new areas added to the game, Door 52. Once you escape the figure lurking around the library in Door 50, you're greeted by a safe haven filled with three new faces if you can call them faces. First off is Jeff, the black tentacled shop owner with his tip jar trying to raise money for college. Fill up the jar and suddenly he has enough. Kind of makes you wonder how much these gold coins are actually worth. Some tells me that'll wind up as a YouTube short in a week or two. The other entities that we see are Bob, a skeleton that doesn't say a whole lot, and this guy right here, a little red goblin named, creatively enough, El Goblino. This guy tells us a lot. Literally, he has a ton of dialogue. The first thing to notice is his constant use of the word dude, which isn't a translation error. Instead, it's a reference to the streamer XQC, who not only says dude a lot, but is also known to occasionally go goblin mode during his streams. The creator of El Goblino has already confirmed all of this on Twitter. But that's not everything that's interesting about this guy. You see, El Goblino is Spanish for the goblin. Whoa, I'm really blowing minds here. And his dialogue mixes in a lot of different Spanish words. Hombre, nunca más, mi amor, which stood out to me as an important detail because, well, why would a Spanish goblin of all things be appearing inside of this haunted hotel? So I did some digging and I found some surprising connections. In Spanish, El Goblino is a very literal translation, but a more colloquial term for goblin is duende. While the word literally translates to elf, it's also used to describe creatures from folklore that are similar to dwarves, gnomes, and yes, goblins. Now, the stories of Duende vary a lot in different parts of the Spanish-speaking world, but based on the furniture that we see in the hotel, which seems to be from 1940s America, I decided to take a look at the folk tales from our Spanish-speaking neighbor to the south, Mexico. And get this, in Mexican folklore, Duende are gnome-like creatures that live inside the walls of homes, which is a perfect match for our friend Goblino. If you speak to him enough times, he'll give you this line, quote, Sometimes I like to knock on the walls, scare the pants off the humans. So funny, dude, which is referencing the scratching and knocking ambient sounds that we hear throughout our playthrough. It's El Goblino in the walls purposely trying to scare us, just like the Duende of folklore. It might also explain the total destruction that we see throughout the hotel. Take a look at the claw marks that we see on the walls. It's very clearly three claws with no thumbs. That can't be Rush, Eyes, Ambush, or any of the other creatures with no arms. It also eliminates Seek, who has rounded hands. But look at El Goblino's design, and what do we see? Three distinct claws with zero thumbs. And wouldn't you know it, but that's another trait that we see of the Duende in folklore. And all of this information helps us to start piecing together how Goblino wound up in the hotel. You see, the most common origin of the Duende in Mexican folklore was when a child died before they were baptized, becoming these morally ambiguous beings that caused mischief. Believe it or not, this is actually one of the reasons why baptizing infants is such common practice nowadays in Catholicism. Anyway, in our previous theory, we talked about how this new room full of beds, the infirmary, likely means that the Doors Hotel was converted into a hospital during World War II. During the war, the country needed more places to care for wounded soldiers, and so vacant hotels became easy makeshift hospitals. But soldiers weren't the only ones being treated inside there. During the 1940s, there was a huge boom in immigration at the American government's request. With 
the war effort in full swing, many farmers were getting enlisted into the military, thereby leaving the U.S. struggling with major agricultural labor shortages. As a result, the government introduced the Bracero Program, an effort to immigrate Mexicans to the U.S. in order to keep things running. But this also meant that men, women, and most importantly, their children were moved to the U.S. and thereby put into harm's way. And that, I suspect, is the sad origin of El Goblino. He's a child who died during this wartime effort. He immigrated to the U.S., was injured, treated in a makeshift hotel hospital, but ultimately passed on before being baptized, thereby leaving him to live on roaming the walls. His story may also give us a hint as to the hotel's location, as there was a higher number of Mexican Americans in states like California, Arizona, and Texas at the time due to the shared border. But duendes weren't just mischief makers, they were also known to guide the lost, something that El Goblino is more than happy to do. He makes a special point to call out Door 60, quote, Oi, stay far away from Door 60, dude. Freaky stuff. Those of you who've played through the new update will know that Room 60 is the newest and arguably biggest feature of the Hotel Plus update. In Room 60, you can make your way to a skeleton door that requires a special key as well as two additional lockpicks. But get it open and you see something quite different. Wait, is, is that is that a new entity? We call that one subscribe. Quick, use your crucifix on it to survive the attack. Is, is it gone? Oh, good job, guys. And don't worry about the cross. It wasn't going to be helpful from here on out anyway. Because we're not dealing with doors anymore. We're dealing with rooms. <laughs> Yeah, the naming conventions for these Roblox games aren't super exciting. Behind the secret skeleton door are a series of numbered rooms with an A in front. These are actually a recreation of another Roblox game, the one that actually inspired the creation of doors in the first place, Rooms, created by Nico Rocks 5555 In this new area, you travel through what appears to be an office building with lockers, desks, and corporate-mandated succulents. And unlike doors, where you just stop at door 100, instead your goal here is to reach room 1000. Yeah, but that should be no problem, right? You just run a bit longer. Longer? Wrong. You see, there are three brand new entities that you have to deal with in these rooms, and you'll be doing it with zero help. The candle and crucifix are no longer working, and even our spiritual buddy guiding light isn't here. Instead, when we die, we're given another kind of death screen, a yellow screen with a new soundtrack that gives us the name Curious Light. And Curious Light is less than helpful. I'm not too sure on what I should call it. Well, it usually attacks around room A60, so you could just call it A60 or A120 again? This shouldn't be hard to figure out either. Look, I just spent an hour trying to get here. The last thing I need is your sass. Anyway, if you do get to the end and finally reach room A1000, despite the unhelpful voice, you end up in a weird void full of doors floating through space. You can then cross the bridge to enter the final door and return to... Doors, the game. Basically, right where you left off. What this tells me is that even though doors and rooms are connected via these secret doors, they don't strictly exist within the same reality. I suspect that those doors that we see floating around lead to other realities that we've yet to explore. And we know all this thanks to one character, Bob. It would seem that maybe our silent skeleton friend in door 52 might be hiding a bit more than we expect. You see, if you decide to take your time while in rooms and look around, you can find a few desks that have name tags on them. Some are references to animators of doors, some to other Roblox creators, but one of them stands out thanks to its pure simplicity, Bob. Could this possibly be the same Bob that winds up as a skeleton in the hotel? I suspect yes. You see, on one of the desks in rooms, you can find this, a purple key card that you can't pick up or interact with. With. Making it even more suspicious is the fact that nowhere in this game do you need to use a key card. I mean, this immediately set off my theorist senses. This key card does, however, make an appearance somewhere else in another Roblox game created by Nico Rocks 5555 A horror game called, get this, Bob is Missing, where you work through a series of creepy scenes in order to rescue your friend Bob. If you manage to rescue him and get the game's good ending, you and Bob exit through a bright white tunnel, one very reminiscent of the glowing white doors that we see in Room A. 1000's void. This, I think, has given us Bob's complete story. He's the common thread here. He's dimension hopping throughout these various connected worlds. He disappears and Bob is missing. He gets rescued and he winds up leaving through a portal that spits him out in rooms. He brings along his purple key card, which is how it winds up on one of the desks. Now stuck in rooms with nowhere to go, he gets a job and works in the office for a bit. Eventually, he's forced to leave when the entities start showing up. Forced to escape through one of the many exit doors that spawn after A200, he winds up in the Doors Hotel, lost in its ever-changing hall. Always. Eventually, he comes across El Goblino, who, like any good duende, guides those who are lost. Tired of constantly getting lost and having to run away from monsters, Bob decides to stay in the safe room until his death, eventually decomposing into a silent pile of bones. Now, all of that might seem like a stretch. Bob is a very common name, after all. That said, if you once again speak to Bob's friend El Goblino, he'll tell you this. Bob told me he saw one of those sparkly thingies, but it wasn't blue. Sparkles that aren't blue, huh? Who does that sound like? It's the entity that talks to us through the death screens in rooms 
rooms. The yellow sparkle, curious light. Bob has to have been to the rooms. It is the only way that he could have met a differently colored sparkle. And while I was initially happy to end the episode there, having explained this dynamic duo of entities, one thing was still bugging me. Curious light itself. What's its purpose? Guiding light is obvious by comparison. It wanted to help us. It wants to defeat the demons that reside in the hotel. But curious light doesn't seem to care about us at all. In fact, it outright says, I usually don't give out hints. Even though it clearly knows the mechanics that are killing us. So why would this entity be so unhelpful? This is especially confusing when you consider that it wants us to keep coming back, to keep going, saying things like, I hope you don't mind trying again. It would be helpful. And hurry back, we're not done yet. Why would he speak to us in such a careless tone, but then push us to keep trying? What are we not done doing? Just didn't seem to make sense until I remembered what was at the end. If we succeed, we enter the void with dozens of other doors, new worlds, and more importantly, a door back to our world full of demons and evil entities. I think Curious Light needs us to get to the end in order for it to access that room and all the other dimensions that it holds, including our own. Why? Well, we established last time that Guiding Light was an angel of some kind helping out the player to defeat the demons that roam the hallways. So it would make sense then for Curious Light to also be an angelic figure. But these angels are clearly limited in what they can do. They can light the way, but they can't physically interact or interfere with the world. That's why Curious Light needs someone else to help it get to that exit, and in so doing, give it the freedom to go somewhere else. So that's what we explicitly know about it, but I suspect we might be able to take this one step further. This game has shown itself to have plenty of religious imagery. One does not simply add a crucifix, demons, angels, homunculi, and un baptized goblins to the game without giving some sort of religious undertone. Which then prompts the question, have there ever been curious angels anywhere in the Bible? Yes. In fact, the last time an angel got a bit antsy, it didn't end too well for humans. According to the Bible, there was one angel that shone brighter than all the others, one that got bored of their current post and eventually challenged God. Their name was Lucifer, also known as the Morning Star. Could Curious Light actually be Satan in disguise? Could it be that by getting to room A1000, we've managed to release him into other dimensions? Mentions. Maybe. Let's just say I wouldn't be surprised if we see Curious Light make an appearance in future updates of Doors, and when he does show up, I ain't gonna trust him. But hey, it would've been way easier to take on Seek and led to much less PTSD if I'd just been smart and saved up my gold coins to buy that stupid crucifix in Jeff's shop. Fortunately, thanks to today's sponsor, SoFi, you can not only save your money smartly, but also make money while you're doing it. SoFi is the all-in-one finance app that's designed to help you with your banking. Trying to save for your first house? SoFi can help. Need to save money for college? You don't need to start up a black market like Jeff, SoFi's got you covered. Anything you need from a banking app is right there at your fingertips, literally, because their mobile app makes everything super easy to follow. If you follow our Instagram, you might have noticed that Stephanie and I went on our first vacation without Ollie in five years. It was a big deal, so we wanted to splurge a little bit on a bigger room with an ocean view, and thanks to SoFi, it was super easy to save up so we could. Not just because they make the whole process simple by allowing you to set goals, but because when you save with SoFi, you can earn more money on top of the money that you're putting in thanks to their up to 3.75% annual percentage yield. That is 12 times the national average. And all of that with no account fees and up to $250 when you sign up for direct deposit. That is even more money on top of all the other money that you're earning. But if all of that wasn't enough to sell you on the idea, SoFi has got one more bonus to offer you theorists specifically. If you go down to the description and click my link, or just scan the QR code that you see on screen right now and open up a SoFi checking account, there is a chance for one lucky theorist to win $10,000 dollars, which, you know, is going to help a lot if you're trying to save up. So go ahead, make sure you use that QR code or my link, sofi.com slash game theory. That's S-O-F-I dot com slash G-A-M-E-T-H-E-O-R-Y, because that is the only way that SoFi is going to know that we sent you. That way you guarantee that you're put into the prize pool. Good luck winning the $10,000, my friends. Can't wait to see which one of you walks home with it. Thanks again to SoFi for sponsoring this video and for offering to change at least one theorist's life. And as always, my friends, remember, Remember, it's just a theory. A game theory! Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.